She said that bloodsuckers could not be killed, explaining that their regeneration was too fast. She also claimed that they are now hiring vampire hunters. Her colleague suddenly remembered what she heard on the news, and she claimed that every 30,000 was a vampire. The blonde clarified the figure because previously they had voiced the figure of 50,000. This girl was pushing a cart with blood transfusion bags. Suddenly she noticed that a couple of packages were missing again, and then they were called out. They were mockingly called angels in white coats and ordered to stop talking. A girl with a tablet in her hands claimed that patients allegedly complained about their negligent attitude to work. The nurses asked the boss for forgiveness for being carried away by talking so loudly, and she assured that they talked about the situation in their country and that donor blood had gone missing. They considered this fact strange, given the situation in the country. The head nurse clarified whether the girls were sure they were missing. The girl asked if her subordinates had again mixed up something regarding expenses. They answered something, stuttering and indistinctly. Having taken off her robe at the nurse's station, the head nurse was adjusting the back of her shoe, and she happily reported that her shift was already over. She ordered the girls to figure it out themselves. Colleagues said goodbye to their boss in unison. That girl's name was Zhen Ying, and she was the supervisor of the medical staff in the blood transfusion department at Jiang Ping Hospital. The brunette admired the head nurse, and she considered her strong and independent. After all, there were rumors that she raised two children alone. Another agreed, and considered her simply ideal. The blonde suggested that she apparently didn't need a man. And our heroine had a secret. Absolutely no one in the world knew about this. Two small children ran to meet her with joyful cries of greeting. The girl opened her arms and hurried to her mother. The boy was gloomy. He claimed that the mother was one day one hour thirty-four minutes and twenty-four seconds late. And he assured that that was why they were offended. The woman became thoughtful. The baby with sad eyes hugged her leg. Soon Jen asked the children not to be offended by her. She suggested that they all go to their favorite ice cream shop together. And at the same time, she took her beloved twins and hugged them tightly. The boy stated that his mother tried to bribe them. The girl who arrived in time to them laughed looking at the three of them. She claimed that Jen was late today. And she suggested out loud that she had a man. The boy angrily replied that his mother could not have a man. He assured that she was a loner. And he asked that if the teacher had a worthy candidate, then it would be worth introducing him to his mother. The woman wiped away her tears laughing. Through her laughter, she tried to say something else, but it came out inarticulate. Jen covered her son's mouth with her hand, and calling him a rattle, she asked the teacher not to listen to him. The teacher assured that the girl was obedient today. She considered her silent, quiet, and modest. It was quite difficult for the little girl to make friends, and she stroked the child's head. The woman also assured that with age, the baby would loosen up and become very active. Jen thanked her for her concern. The teacher also advised Miss Jen and her children to be much more careful. She claimed that recently, there had been a lot more blood-sucking creatures. It seemed strange to the woman that they seemed to multiply and become even more aggressive. The children's mother thanked her modestly. At this very time, a kid who accidentally ran out onto the site fell and broke his knees from the asphalt. The teacher felt sorry for the boy. She made an excuse to take him to the doctor to provide him with medical care. The child's scarlet blood oozed in a thin stream from the wound on his broken knee. The twin children began to undergo metamorphoses. Their eye color changed to red, their ears became sharper, and their fangs protruded from their mouths. The boy clenched his fists to control himself. Miss Jen cursed quietly. She quickly said goodbye to the teacher, grabbed the children under the arms, and rushed as fast as she could to her car. The teacher was left standing in some confusion at such a sudden change in the behavior of the children's mother. The woman asked the children to hold on a little longer. The baby asked her mother faster, while clinging to her chest. Suddenly a pillar of light fell to the ground. There was a deafening sound. The children got scared and clung to their mother. In a second it was all over, and a deep crater formed in the area of the children's institution. Jen voiced her decision to quickly leave here. Grabbing both children by the armpits, she quickly ran to her car. Having seated her son on the ground next to the wheel, she hurriedly opened the doors of her car. A woman was putting her little daughter in the back seat. She called on the children to be quiet, looking around warily. Jun Yin kept a secret from everyone. Her children were vampires. The boy hugged his sister, trying to comfort and protect her at the same time. Five years ago, due to drinking too much alcohol, our heroine slept with a man whom she had not previously known. The woman has only vague memories of that night. She didn't even remember his face, but his heart and hands were incredibly warm. Jen was bullied and teased that she didn't even know the child's father and that he simply ran away after the night with her. People had no idea how it was possible not to know where the children were from, and even twins. 
but the expectant mother decided, come what may, but she knew for sure that she would not get rid of the children. And on her twin's birthday, a flock of bats flew near the hospital. It was scary. After all, it seemed like a bad and alarming sign. Then, sitting in the room of the Zhen Hospital, it seemed that those mice seemed to be trying to protect her children as a whole flock. They were everywhere, but she was not the kind of person who would abandon her child, and she believed that the children were the main ones and did not deserve such a fate as she herself had. When the woman first saw her twins, then they became the meaning of her whole life. Jen took care of the babies day by day. She fed, looked after, played, and cared for them. It seemed that she literally did not leave even a second from her beloved crumbs. But somehow, after playing a little, the girl bit her mother's finger until it bled. At this time, her eyes turned red and the tips of her ears became sharper. The woman was horrified and couldn't believe herself. It turned out that she slept with a vampire five years ago. When Jen was driving along the road in a car, a flock of birds flew across them. Pressing the gas pedal to the floor, the woman stopped her car on the side of the road. She felt the children's ears, checking if they were okay. The boy snapped, telling her to stop pulling his ear. The woman, making sure that everything was in order, exhaled noisily. She was glad that no one saw them. The kid started solving a Rubik's Cube puzzle. He recalled his mother's admonitions that they should always restrain themselves. Soon the baby demonstrated the assembled toy by color, and he boasted that he was a master at this. The mother thought that she may always did a good job, but she couldn't understand why everything was so hard for her. The girl's strength grew every day. Jen praised her daughter and stroked her head. She said that she was great, and she offered to buy her ice cream. The little girl agreed and smiled contentedly. The boy said that he also wanted an ice cream. The mother said that she would allow him a little too, recalling that my son had carries. The woman watched with pleasure and joy and some trepidation as her son straightened the bow on his sister's clothes. She wanted so much to be able to live a quiet, ordinary life with her children. But they needed to stay away from the vampire hunters for everything to work out well. But then her phone rang. Miss Zheng was informed that she urgently needed to come to the hospital. Her help was needed in performing an emergency operation on a dying patient, and she promised to be there soon. The woman told the children to fasten their seatbelts and said, Let's go, and pressed the gas pedal to the floor. Soon they arrived at the front entrance of the hospital. Jen ordered the kids to wait for her in the car and not get out of it. She asked Chi Mei to look after his sister. The children promised to do just that. The victim was screaming. Her face was partially covered in blood, and in place of the right eye there was a mess of soft tissue. The nurse, seeing that the situation was critical, ordered the victim to be quickly taken to the operating room. The surgeon asked what happened to the patient, and he demanded to find his medical card. Still a very young nurse, she answered Dr. Lowe, that judging by the wound, a vampire was involved in this. Another colleague, wearing a surgical suit and mask, was carrying an IV stand. At this time, our heroine hurried to join them. Colleagues were surprised that Ms. Zheng had already arrived so quickly. Taking a quick look at the wounded woman, the girl was surprised how she managed to escape in the first place. It seemed simply impossible. An oxygen machine was already connected to the patient. The nurse assured that the victim was brought by a man, and she pointed her finger deeper into the corridor, but there was no one there anymore. The girl confusedly assured that he had really stood there just now. Zheng asked if her colleague was sure. Dr. Lo ordered the operation to begin immediately. The head nurse accepted the order, junior colleagues assured of readiness. But then a young nurse noticed a book with a green cover lying on the floor, dropped by someone. Opening it, she realized that it was a document. The document of the man who brought the patient here. The photo, name, gender were registered, as well as affiliation with the specialty of clearing vampires. From everything it turned out that the guy was a vampire hunter, and he must have saved the patient from the bloodsucker. While younger colleagues were chatting about the guy's identity, our heroine began to worry about the children left in the car. She blamed herself that Chi Mei and Seiya could have been discovered by a vampire hunter. Colleagues called Miss Jung, but she told the nurses to go to the operating room, and she promised to return soon and join them. And handing her white coat to her subordinate, she ran as fast as she could to the car. Their boss called Jung after them, but she was already rushing to the exit from the department past the reception. After rushing out of the hospital, Jung hurried to her car. She called the children by name, but the car door was open and the back seat was empty. The mother of the children let out a scream. Meanwhile, the kids were in the nearest store. They were both standing next to the candy counter. Seiya told her brother that she wanted to eat. The boy replied that he had little money, and he called her to get back into the car. She may assured that their mother would be very worried about them. But then one of the customers offered to pay for them. She put a coin into the machine, and she told the children to choose what they want. 
a boy peeked out from behind the woman. He recognized Zheng Xieyu and her brother Shi Mei. He had a water pistol in his hands. The mother stroked the boy's head, and she asked if these children were his classmates from kindergarten. The kid nodded in response. The woman sat down next to the children. She asked those where their parents were and why they were all alone in the store, assuring that now was a rather dangerous time. The son loudly declared that they didn't have a dad at all. After all, he had never seen him next to them. Shi Mei got angry. He could barely contain himself. But the woman pointed at her chatty son and made him an appropriate gesture, calling for silence. At this very time, a tall man in a long black coat uncorked a can of cola he had just bought. The boy ran up and grabbed the man's leg and said that it was his dad. Saya was surprised by her brother's action. The man's gaze was wary, cold and aloof. No kids were to interfere with his plan to drink cola. Shi Mei, holding him tightly by the leg, asked where dad had been for so long. This completely brought the stranger out of patience. A silent question was written on his face, and the very pleased kid defiantly extended his hand and introduced his father to his classmate. The man crushed a cola can with his hand. Around his neck hung a chain with a silver cross. He suddenly remembered that pretty girl. The red-haired guy could not understand where this baby came from, and she may asked what happened, and he suggested that dad call the doctor if he suddenly became ill. A classmate's mother stroked Saya's head, and she asked if this guy was really their father. The little girl said nothing, but also went and grabbed the man's other leg tightly. Screams were heard in the hospital corridor. Zheng nervously asked her colleague where she last saw her children. She replied that she saw how they went with the man to her office. The girl, widening her eyes in fear, insisted that then she thought that they knew each other well. Zheng asked to tell me more about that man. She couldn't believe her ears. The blonde sharply opened the doors of her office. From the threshold she began to call Seiya and Shi Mei. When he saw the picture... She couldn't believe her eyes. All three sat and snored peacefully, and in Saya's hands was a cone of melted ice cream. The man was also dozing and holding the children, hugging them to him. The red-haired one was the first to realize that they had been entered and immediately woke up. She may also rubbed his sleepy eyes, and the baby was in complete prostration. The guy asked the nurse if these children were hers, and he immediately hurried to hand the babies over to their mother. The daughter grabbed Zheng by the neck, and Shi Mei held her leg. The blonde warily asked if her children had done anything wrong, and if so, she asked for forgiveness for them. The guy replied that there was nothing like that, but he asked her not to forget to teach them next time not to call a stranger their dad. When the man left and they were alone, Zheng tiredly sat down on the sofa next to the children. She said what they did was dangerous, but she herself could not understand why that person seemed familiar to her and evoked such emotions. The woman was brought out of her state of immersion in her thoughts by the voice of her boss. He asked the nurse why she left so quickly and what happened to her. The blonde assured that it was nothing like that and that all urgent matters have already been resolved. The doctor took the girl in his arms. She was glad for the hug. The man said that the baby had grown up and become a little taller. She may joined in the greeting. He told Uncle Lo that he had not seen him for a long time. The kid began to boast that he had a dad. The brunette smilingly summarized that Nurse Zheng had a boyfriend, but she shook her head negatively. She may assured that he deliberately gave his mother the opportunity to understand this, then everything was lost in vain. The blonde asked Dr. Lo if he had heard that there were fewer bags of blood lately. She assured that the nurses had recently noticed this fact. The brunette raised his eyebrows questioningly and adjusted his glasses on his nose. He assured that he would find out about this a little later. Nurse Zheng said goodbye because it was already time for them to leave. She assured that she and the doctor would see each other tomorrow. Lou responded by shouting bye-bye and waving his hand. Leading the children home, holding them tightly by the hand, the mother scolded them for running away. She insisted that she was very worried, and she reproached them for calling the stranger their father. Her son asked how long she planned to remain single, and he asked if she planned to be lonely until old age. He believed it was time to find them a dad. Jung told the children that rumor had it that the man was very dangerous, and the three of them should have stayed away from him. She insisted that his personality was simply terrible. Shi Mei claimed that that adult had two evil eyes. He thought he was rude, and if his father was like that, then the boy did not want to be his child. The kid said that after all his assessments, he believed that Uncle Lo was the most suitable candidate for a marriage alliance with his mother. The boy assured that he was gentle and attentive. He worked seriously and extremely reliably, and in Shi Mei's imagination, the mother and the doctor had mutual sympathy. The kid thought the man was interesting, and he admitted that he was worried that his mother did not understand them. The son told Jen that it must have been difficult to live alone with children without a husband, 
The blonde lightly tugged at her son's cheek and assured him that he was talking too much. There was a missing child notice with his photo hanging on the pole, and next to it, there were the same stickers wherever it was possible to attach them. The man asked if they meant vampires. He thought it was a joke, and he was sure that they did not exist. His interlocutor replied that if this was so, then Xiao Di should still be alive. The red-haired guy asked the lady if she was the main teacher here. The woman raised her tear-stained face. She insisted that she was just interning here. A man approached and asked the lady not to worry so much. He insisted that this was the second case this month of a missing child, and he reported that a vampire was involved in the first case. The woman started screaming that her Zhao Di was so cute, that he sang a new song in music class yesterday, and she moaned that she could not accept this terrible fact. She continued to moan and reproach herself, that it was all her fault, that we should have taken better care of our son and then this would not have happened. The man asked her not to worry so much. The service employee hugged the mother of the missing child and took her aside. He assured that as soon as her condition stabilizes, she will be interrogated again on another day. Zhang touched everything and looked around. He told himself that it looked like an ordinary kindergarten. And at first glance, there was nothing unusual about him at all. But then he heard a call. Turning towards the sound of the voice, the man saw the baby running towards him. She waved her hand at him in greeting. Saya high-fived, clapping her palm against her neighbor's palm. He noted to himself how cute the girl was. Xiao Mei also recognized his uncle neighbor. He shouted dad to him. The vampire hunter sighed in defeat when he recognized that vile child. And I thought to myself that the world really was a small place. The man tried to pretend that he did not hear or did not recognize, and turning to the side, began to walk away. Little Saya thought sadly that the uncle who bought her ice cream hated her, and she assumed it was because she was different from other children. The brother hugged and held the girl by the shoulders and reminded her that my mother warned me that this man was very dangerous and there was no point in approaching that. Saya, pointing her finger to the side, said that she did not think that that person was bad. The brother retorted that she was small and knew nothing. The girl claimed that she was only ten minutes younger than her brother. She categorically did not agree with his opinion. The woman was surprised that Shimei and Shea were still here. She asked if they had quarreled. The girl, letting off steam from anger, shouted that she hated her brother. Frustrated, the girl ran away. Shimei shouted after her. He was sad. The woman, trying to console him, promised that she would go and see where his sister had run away. She promised to return to him soon. The local police station reported to Zhang's team that the missing child's stump had been found. The man held out a bag with a wrapped item. He said it was crime scene evidence. Zhang picked up the package and began to closely examine its contents. Soon he threw his coat over his shoulders. As he was leaving, he told his colleague that he needed to return to kindergarten. And I thought that that teacher could have big problems. While Zhang was driving along the road, a colleague gave him information. We found information that her name and identity were fictitious. And in the place where she previously worked, there was also a missing child. Little Saya was sitting in one of the stalls of the school toilet. She was sad that she was different from other children, and that she herself was strange. The teacher found the girl there. And after listening to her, she began to assure that there was nothing terrible about it at all. That all people had different tastes. The woman's eyes began to change color and she bared her sharp fangs, making a chilling sound. But then a man's voice came from behind. The vampire hunter ordered the creature to move away and pointed the barrel of his gun at her. The vampire, unafraid, approached Zhang with great speed. He had never seen anything like this before. The man was surprised that the creature's eyes were purple. He knew that the power of the one who drinks the blood of children was tens of times greater than that of ordinary blood-sucking creatures. The vampire managed to knock the gun out of the hunter's hands and grabbed him by the throat with her clawed paw. Zhang knew that the girl was nearby. He ordered her to hide in the booth and not open her eyes. The baby was shaking all over. The creature wounded a man with its claws. Blood appeared. She rejoiced at yet another catch. Zhang approached her son. She asked why he was alone and where his sister was. Shimei pointed in the direction with his finger and replied that they had a fight, and she ran away angry, and Teacher Chin went to look for her. He regretted that he had accidentally upset his little sister. The vampiress rejoiced. She said that every last person was pitiful and weak, and they were intended only to be her food. Zhang was horrified that this creature was stronger than he originally thought, and that he, weakened, will have to tinker with her some more. But he decided to save the child no matter what. But then the hunter heard a shot. The vampire began to fall. Turning his gaze, he saw Zheng at the door with a smoking pistol in his hands, and Shimei was holding her leg next to her. The exhausted vampire hunter sat down on the floor. The wound was taking its toll. Little Saya cautiously looked out of the booth. 
She was glad to see her mother. The creature was lying on the floor. Shi Mei rushed to hug his little sister. Zheng ordered the children to stay there and not move. The creature moved its hand, and within a second she was rushing to defeat Zheng. He ordered the blonde to be careful. He asked Zheng what she was doing here, and she realized that it was dangerous here. He ordered them to take the children and leave here as quickly as possible. The girl replied that it was not good for them to be separated. The vampire was approaching the hunter with great speed from behind, ready to tear him apart with her claws. Suddenly a terrible scream was heard behind the young man. Turning around, he saw the vampire's face twisted in pain. The kid was holding a piece of mirror in his hand. The reflected beam was aimed directly at the monster's face. A terrible thought flashed through the vampire's head, but it was already too late. The surprised mother looked at her son. She did not expect such resourcefulness from Shimei. The scream of a vampire distraught with pain made everyone turn around. Her face was ominous. Izion's team arrived on time and helped detain the vampire. She had no chance to escape. The man stroked the boy's head. He couldn't understand where the kid got such intelligence. After all, he saved everyone's life today. The boss looked at the little hero in bewilderment. There was something unusual about this child. Shimei himself was very surprised. He was amazed that adults didn't know that vampires were afraid of direct sunlight. The boss looked at the boy carefully. He replied that there are exceptions, half-breed vampires, and he assured that they could withstand sunlight. These words made the young woman think. So my children are special, she thought. This is why Shimei and Seiya are not afraid of the light. The man's unexpected question interrupted Jung's thoughts. He asked where she could learn to handle a pistol so well. The nurse was confused at first, but then she said that she saw how they do it in TV series. And the fact that she hit the target was considered simple luck. The baby grabbed her mother's skirt, pointing to the man she looked at him with admiration. The girl said he was shot because he was protecting her. The mother, looking at her daughter, thought how strange it was that Seiya did not react to the smell of blood. One of the employees approached Jin. He remembered that she was a nurse. He asked me to help my boss. The assistant's proposal confused the chief. He felt awkward, but the subordinate insisted on his own. Miss Jin was also embarrassed. Blushing slightly, she looked at the young man with uncertainty. The assistant immediately realized and took the children in his arms. Then he said that the first aid kit was on the windowsill. He quickly left, slamming the door. Overcoming shyness, the nurse asked the boss to take off his shirt. The wound needed to be treated urgently. Jung went to get the first aid kit. The man looked at the girl hesitantly. Then the nurse offered to help him. But the guy replied that it was a minor wound that did not require treatment. Jung walked up decisively and began to take off the man's shirt. She saw a large, bleeding wound on her shoulder. Under the pressure of the girl, the guy had to sit down in a chair. Resistance was inappropriate. The nurse looked closely and saw unusual scars on the man's body. This reminded the girl of something. But before she could finish, Zhang suddenly stood up, putting on his shirt. He said that he would stop looking at him. The girl tried to calm him down. She said that she had never seen anything like this before. She lifted her shirt again. She quickly treated the wound, continuing to blow on the cut. Zhang told the man that if the wound is not treated in time, it can become infected. I had to go to the hospital immediately and get stitches. The man tried to push the nurse away. He hurriedly stood up and said that he was fine. Confused, Jen looked at the guy. He turned his back and said that after he finished with his business, he would go to the hospital himself. The girl could not understand why the man's entire body was covered with ugly scars. But then I forbade myself to think about it. Jung quickly walked towards the door, lost in her thoughts, pondering what is happening. On the street, a man saw a shadow behind him. Without turning around, he became wary. The boss turned sharply and grabbed the hand of the man walking behind him. He screamed in pain and tried to escape from the man's grasping hands. And he said quietly that it was he lowering his mask, from under which a frightened face appeared. The boss looked at him in surprise, and then he reminded him that he didn't want to help him anymore, and he asked whether his conscience bothered him that, as a doctor, he secretly took bags of blood from the hospital. But he already greedily grabbed the dose. The man replied that he knew that if he did not drink fresh blood, he would not be able to maintain his life for a long time. And from the blood of animals, the body will dry out, and he will soon die. The guy asked how his death or life was related to him, and he asked if he was afraid of being killed first. The doctor replied that then the hunter would not have saved his life, and he asked not to worry, assuring that he had not told anyone about his identity. The hunter stopped. He was amazed at the man's confidence that everything he saw was real. The guy insisted that everyone who died tragically died simply because they believed in the harmless and kind appearance of others. The guy has already begun the transformation. He said that if next time he brings blood of type zero, the taste will be sweeter. The vampire quickly appeared next to the doctor. 
The clawed fingers were menacingly poised with his head. The man replied that if the hunter wanted to silence his mouth, he could kill him right now. But the guy had already acquired a normal appearance, and turning away, greedily drank blood from the donor bag. Going into the darkness, the vampire assumed that if the doctor brought him blood of type zero, the taste would be sweeter. Jen, noticing that her children decided to sleep on the balcony, hanging upside down, asked them to immediately go down and go to bed. She may objected, saying that sleeping upside down was much more comfortable. The girl was surprised that they didn't even feel dizzy under such sleeping conditions. After finishing reading the story to Saya, her mother asked her if she wanted to know what happened next to the prince and princess. Having received an affirmative answer, she said that they could continue tomorrow, but now it was time to go to bed. She also asked her son if he should choose something more appropriate for his age. The boy replied that he was bored reading fairy tales, as they seemed boring and meaningless to him. In addition, he called them unfair and fictitious. This upset his sister, and his mother hastened to calm her down, saying that she should not listen to him because everything was real with them. Jen was surprised that the book contained stories about vampires. This interested the children, and they also decided to watch. In the book, vampires were described as scary, bloodthirsty, and evil creatures. Saya asked her mother if they would become the same as their teacher Chin. She was very upset that they would have to eat people and even bite their mother. Her brother tried to console her, saying that they would definitely not become like that. Doubting his words, he asked his mother if they would become like that. Hugging her children, she told them that, of course, they would not become like that, because they were her sweetest and most wonderful babies. She didn't understand how she could compare herself to such terrible monsters. She assured the children that they would learn to control themselves, and everything would be fine. She may assured her that they would obey her, and then Mommy would not lie to them, not like in fairy tales. But Jen was still worried that this day would someday come. Dayu was surprised that his boss responded very quickly. He only asked him to quickly tell what he wanted from him. He told Zhang Yang that after the recent events with the kindergarten teacher, there were suspicions that his location had been discovered. The guy wasn't particularly surprised by this and asked what the problem was. Dayu said that for his safety, the agency decided to find him another place to live. But knowing that he did not like moving, he took everything into his own hands and personally furnished his new apartment. Everything you needed was there too. It seemed to him that he was just a frivolous type with a loose tongue, but it turned out that Zhang Yang had other talents. The guy confidently stated that he has really good taste in interior design. He just needed to wait a little so he could see for himself. Standing in front of two doors, Zhang could not figure out which one he should enter. 1902 or 1904. Deciding that he should go through the first door, he headed towards it. Seeing a system with a security code on the door, the guy was amazed that Yu did not warn him about this, and did not give him the code in advance. Having dialed his number, he heard a female voice saying that the number was temporarily unavailable. Having entered the room, the guy had to admit that the interior was indeed impressive, but he wondered if it was too sophisticated. He also could not shake the feeling that this environment smacked of something maternal. He never would have thought that the boy had such a side to his personality. Zhang Yun was exhausted, having not slept for several days, working like hell. He decided to take a shower and go to bed. In his heart, the guy thought that when he first entered the apartment, a toy flew into him with the wish, Welcome home. He thought about Da Yu's words about his excellent taste in interior design and his confidence that everything would be in the best possible way. He mentally called him a critic, surprised by his strange taste. Suddenly Zhang for some reason remembered Jen and did not understand why he was thinking about her. Noticing the children's shower gel, it confused him even more because he couldn't understand how Da Yu could think that he was using one. Entering her apartment, the girl was amazed by the hot weather that day. Since her children were with Dr. Luo, she thought that they would not return soon. While she had free time, she decided to take a shower first. Walking into the bathroom and seeing Zhang Yun washing himself in the shower, the girl couldn't help but scream in surprise. Mr. Zhang sat nervously on a soft white sofa, wearing only a towel. His burgundy hair was damp and disheveled from his shower. He held a phone in his hands and corresponded with a friend. The guy asked what the number of his new apartment was. Dayu replied that it was 1,904 and asked if he had broken into someone else's apartment. He wrote that, of course not. Scratching his chin thoughtfully, Mr. Zhang concluded that this was not his apartment. An indignant girl stood silently in front of him, her hands on her hips. She annoyedly announced that the guy broke into someone else's house in daylight to take a shower. Then Miss Zhang said indignantly that he could have apologized. Mr. Zhang looked away embarrassedly and said that it was a misunderstanding. 
Beads of sweat appeared on his face from awkwardness. The girl asked how the man managed to open the front door. She then pointed disgruntledly at her son's half-empty bottle of gel. It was in the shape of a yellow duck. The guy got up from the couch irritably and loudly emphasized that there was a misunderstanding. However, he did not notice how, during a sharp rise, a white towel was torn from his hips. Miss Jang was dumbfounded as she watched what was happening. A look of horror appeared on her face. Mr. Jang slowly looked down at the towel lying there. His cheeks began to turn red. The girl covered her face with her hands and asked the guy to cover himself. She was extremely embarrassed by the situation. The heart began to beat faster. Suddenly the doorbell rang behind her. Miss Jang froze, trying to listen and understand who it was. She didn't have time to turn around when a familiar man appeared in the aisle. With a happy look on his face, Dr. Luo said that he had brought her children. He was holding Xie Yu men with one hand and a large teddy bear with the other. In front of him stood an animated Xi men, hugging a white hair with a bow around his neck. The boy talked about how his uncle took them to the shopping center to the machine with soft toys. Miss Jang walked up to the children with a smile and listened to them carefully. Meanwhile, Mr. Jang, hiding behind the sofa, recognized Dr. Luo's voice. He realized that he knew this girl well. The man with glasses asked if the woman was alone in her apartment. He didn't mind staying with her for a while. Miss Jung laughed quietly, with an awkward smile and embarrassment in her voice. She replied that there was no one else in the apartment, trying to say it as casually as possible to hide her excitement. Dr. Luo, looking down at the floor, humbly asked permission to enter. His disheveled hair stuck out unruly in different directions, and his eyes expressed fatigue. He felt very thirsty. Mr. Jang had been quietly watching what was happening all this time. Not wanting to show off the half-naked guest, the girl replied that there was a supermarket downstairs. Miss Jung sincerely apologized and said that now was not the best time to visit. At the end, she thanked the man for taking care of her children. As soon as the door closed, Luo let out a heavy sigh. Having said goodbye to her friend, the girl leaned against the door as if exhausted. Sighing heavily, she looked up and what she saw struck her greatly. The confused man struggled to fasten his fly, looking intently at the two children. They giggled, barely holding back their laughter, which only added to his embarrassment. There was a tense atmosphere in the room. The girl had a smile on her face, while the boy was serious and dissatisfied. His expression clearly contradicted his sister's mood. She men turned to his mother, and said that now she could explain something to them. He asked why she was hiding a half-naked man in the house. At this time, Saya continued to look at the guy cheerfully. Then the girl's son asked what the couple was doing here before they arrived. Not wanting to listen to such questions anymore, Miss Jeng slapped him on the head. Mr. Zhang was finally fully dressed. Xi Men began to actively wave the yellow jar in front of him. He complained loudly that the man had used up half of his shower gel. The guy irritably called the boy a little asshole. Wanting him to calm down, he promised to buy ten bottles of the same gel. After speaking, Mr. Zhang rudely told him to shut up. However, Xi Men didn't even think about stopping the hysteria. Even though the man had his hand over his mouth, he muttered that he wanted to speak. Finally, the boy said that Mr. Jiang is a pervert who steals children's shower gels. This statement simply humiliated the already embarrassed guy. Suddenly, the man felt a touch on his back. Soon, little Xiao Men was on his shoulder. She carefully and thoughtfully studied his puzzled expression. Mr. Jiang was deeply moved by the girl's behavior. He looked at her smiling face for a long time, holding Xi Men in his arms, who continued to try to escape. Seiya babbled happily. Miss Jang watched silently all this time. Her sweet daughter began to hug the guy. The girl was extremely curious why Xiao Men liked the man so much. Xi Men, outraged by what he saw, protested. He told his younger sister to let the man go. Realizing that his words were useless, the boy snorted and declared that girls were too easy to win. The son looked displeasedly at his mother, expecting support. Miss Jang asked what he was hinting at. She decided to remind him that she had recently asked him not to talk like an adult. The girl added that her son needs to apologize to the pervert. Smiling awkwardly, she said that he should apologize to Uncle Zhang because he was now their neighbor. Xi Men expressed his disagreement loudly and abruptly. He absolutely didn't want to do this. The man told him not to dwell on what had happened. He didn't hold a grudge against the boy at all. The night was clear, and the sky was strewn with many stars sparkling like precious stones. Suddenly, flocks of bats flew out of the darkness, adding mystery to this magical atmosphere. At this time, Mr. Jang was in his room number 1904. He was sitting on the bed with an open box on his lap. A lamp was burning on a small cabinet, softly illuminating the room. 
In a black case on a white canvas lay various objects. On the left was a pistol and a chain with a silver cross. On the right side was a sharp iron dagger. A diary and a gold cross were attached to the inside of the lid. The man thoughtfully picked up the weapon, not noticing how his finger was on the trigger. There was tension in his gaze, as if an internal conflict was haunting him. The thought that he was now Miss Jung's neighbor weighed heavily on his mind. The time had passed midnight. Mr. Jung couldn't sleep for a long time. Feeling some incomprehensible movement, he sharply opened his eyes, warily listening to the surrounding silence. Suddenly, under the blanket, the man felt movement. Instantly, without thinking, he grabbed the gun, preparing for possible danger. Lifting the blanket with his other hand, he was amazed at what he saw. At Mr. Zhang's feet lay a little girl named Xiao Men. The man could not understand how this little girl ended up in his apartment. She slept peacefully, occasionally making muffled rustling noises, gentle snoring and muttering in her sleep. Zhang, looking out the window, thought that this was not the first time her daughter had been walking around at night. But she could not even think that this could happen outside her home. The young woman came to the boss and saw him holding Xiao in his arms. In response to the girl's silent question, he said that there was nothing surprising in this, since she never locks her door. The mother reached out her hands to take the child. She gently told the baby that she needed to go home to her bed. But Xiao Men, sobbing, hugged the man even tighter. Then Zheng more insistently asked her daughter to return home and pulled her towards her. The girl did not react to all her mother's entreaties. She only pressed herself even closer to the brunette. Due to unsuccessful attempts, the woman said that she did not understand why the child became so attached to the man. Then the boss quietly asked Zheng to let him talk to the little girl. Looking at the confused mother standing, the guy began to affectionately stroke the child and said that she was a very good girl. After which the child calmed down and fell asleep. Zheng was surprised how quickly he was able to calm the child. Where does such a stern man come from so much warmth and tenderness, she thought. The boss suggested that she leave the girl with him. And so that the woman does not worry, he is ready to give up his room to them. How attentive he is, the girl thought. But the brunette strictly told her not to touch anything here and not to look under the pillow. When the guy left, slamming the door behind him, the blonde thought that perhaps she had made a mistake about him. And in fact, he is not at all what he seems. The thought of what might be under the pillow did not leave Jen. She quietly went out to check if the brunette had fallen asleep. The boss was fast asleep, lounging on the sofa. Then the nurse returned to the bedroom. She rummaged under the pillow and found a pistol. This alerted Jung, and she thought that she should not forget who he was. The woman thought that since he lived next door, they could not remain safe. For the sake of Shi Men and Shi Yu, she must find another apartment. The next day, the boss went alone to the vampire's lair. He stood on the edge of an abandoned building. The vile voice of a vampire was heard behind the brunette. The monster began to shout that people would never defeat them. The vampire approached from behind and tried to bite the boss, but the man pushed him away and threw him to the floor. At this moment, other vampires began to appear from all sides. There were a lot of them. Then the brunette thought that if people couldn't cope with them, then he could do it. And he began to transform. The frightened vampires screamed that it was a hybrid, and the boss said that their place is in hell. After the fight with the monsters, the brunette called his subordinates. He informed them that there were several corpses lying on the roof of the Jinrong building. I asked them to remove them from there. The man hurriedly left the place. Each new transformation devastated him. Breathing heavily, he decided to find somewhere to hide. He needed about an hour to regain his strength. Suddenly he saw a house, in one of the windows of which a familiar silhouette could be seen. It was Zheng. He thought that she lived here. An unsuspecting girl was blow-drying her hair in front of the mirror. At that moment, a man flew into her open window. He stood in front of the blonde, frozen in fear. Putting his finger on her lips, the boss just said it was me. After that, he passed out, falling asleep on her shoulder, leaving the girl in complete bewilderment. At this time, there was a knock on the door in Shi Mei's voice. He asked what the noise was and asked permission to enter. When the boy opened the door, he saw a strange man lying on his mother's lap. He froze in surprise. Jung tried to calm the child down, saying that she would explain everything now. But Mei immediately shouted for this creepy guy to get away immediately. After some time, he woke up. Jen treated his wounds and applied bandages. Jiang Yang took her hand, but before he could say anything, Shi Wei attacked him with questions. The boy was very unhappy that this man broke into their apartment again. He was worried about whether Jiang had offended his mother. The guy answered him with contempt that it was none of his business. Jen ordered her son to stop asking such things, as his behavior put her in an awkward position. Jiang noticed that it was quite cold in that room. He had the idea that there might be a draft here. 
The girl noted displeasedly that in this situation, this question was inappropriate. After all, it was he who broke into her window, breaking it, and then passed out. He should have thanked her for not calling the police. Jeanne also reminded him that he must pay compensation for the broken window. Turning away, the guy made the excuse that he was just passing by. Indignant, she reminded that she lived on the 19th floor. Jeanne again asked how he ended up here. Zhang's excuse was that many of their operations involved helicopters. The girl was indignant, since she had never heard of this, and it seemed strange to her. The guy did not consider this surprising, because she is a civilian, and such Jen are not given all the details. He explained that he would send a man to fix her window, and that it was time for him to leave. The girl took his hand. Exhaling, she said that she didn't have to leave right now. She may decided to make coffee for John. He cooked it as hot as possible and added a lot of salt and pepper, which he called spices. Mom took him in her arms and ordered him to stop, calling it childish. She also told him not to think that she didn't notice anything. At this time, little Sia began to show Jian the family photo album. He found it strange that Jen was alone in all the photographs. He was surprised that she seemed to have no family. The girl brought coffee and asked what he was looking at there. He asked where the children's father was, since he had never seen him. She explained that they did not have a father and asked him to tell him what he wanted. Exhaling, he replied that he didn't really want anything. He just looked at her photos and noticed that Jen was alone in all the pictures, so he became curious. Noticing the obvious dissatisfaction on the girl's face, he asked her to forget what he said. There was a tense atmosphere in the dialogue. Suddenly a castle of cubes began to fall towards Sia. The girl covered her daughter with herself so that she would not get hurt. Zhang did the same, but covered Jen with himself. With a careless movement, the little girl pushed the guy a little closer to her mother's face. This action caused their lips to touch. This made both of them feel embarrassed and instantly move away from each other. Embarrassed, they apologized to each other. Some time later, Jen took her children to an amusement park. Sia ate a caramel apple and Shimei ate cotton candy. Thoughts about Jian's words still couldn't leave her head. He said that when he looked at her photos, he noticed that she was alone in all the pictures, so he became curious. The girl thought about her childhood. Behind her, the children were entertained by an animator dressed as Mickey Mouse. The man in the suit asked the children if they knew what Mickey's favorite treat was, since there was a prize for the correct answer. Lots of kids named different options, from cookies to cheese. Little Sia also wanted to participate, but she was not noticed, and this made her very sad. The man in the clown suit said that they had invited special guests for today's monster game. He called to greet the vampires. The organizers urged parents not to worry, because it was just a special makeup, and their children were not in danger. The animator in a clown costume also ordered them not to cry if any of them were caught by vampires. This made the children laugh and scream, feigning fear. He announced the start of the game, and all the children began to scatter in different directions. But one boy stopped and said that he saw fangs in their mouths. With horror on his face, he shouted that these were real vampires. Suddenly, piercing screams were heard in the amusement park. People ran away in panic, shouting about the arrival of real vampires. The atmosphere instantly changed, and the visitors sought shelter in fear. A woman with short hair, frightened, stood still. Not knowing where to run, she held her one-year-old son tightly in her arms. Suddenly one of the vampires in a blue hood suddenly rushed towards her. The young mother was horrified. Her fear was not for herself but for her child. She hugged her son even tighter to her chest, trying to protect him. However, the vampire turned out to be stronger. With a malicious smile, he quickly snatched the crying boy and ran away. The woman, shocked by the horror of what had happened, began screaming after him. The guards began monotonously repeating that people should immediately leave the park. Miss Jung stood confused in the center of the crowd, holding her small children tightly. Due to the growing noise, the girl could not figure out what to do. Then the sounds of police sirens were heard. A group of three black cars responded to a call at the entertainment complex. Men began to get out of the cars, including Mr. Jung. Quickly closing the door behind him, he ordered his subordinates to evacuate the people immediately and also evaluate the territory. They obeyed him. Late in the evening, as sunset began to color the sky, the crime scene was fenced off with yellow tape. The man stood thoughtfully with his hands on his hips. His deep thoughts were interrupted by his subordinate. He said the team thoroughly searched the entire park, including all the toilets. However, the vampire seems to have disappeared without a trace. Da Yu suggested that he might have hidden in the residential area that was nearby. Therefore, he sent some people to search there too. The mother of the stolen baby sat on the asphalt in complete despair. Her body trembled with tears that endlessly rolled down her cheeks. 
All she could think about was what would happen to her innocent child. Mr. Zhang turned to his subordinate. He asked if there were any other victims among the park's vacationers. He replied that, judging by their data, no. Hearing the answer, the man in the suit fell back into thought. He said the vampires were not trying to quench their thirst and did not attack children or adults. They only kidnapped one child. Unnoticed, an acquaintance, Miss Jung, approached Mr. Zhang from behind. Agreeing with his thoughts, she asked what the vampire was trying to achieve. Turning around, the guy displeasedly asked why the girl was still there. He tried to hide the excitement that was creeping into his voice. The man grabbed her hand and hurriedly led her to the exit. He asked if she realized how dangerous it was to be here. The woman slowed down a little and said that she knew where the vampire was hiding. Miss Zheng led Mr. Zhang to the old abandoned Shenyang Tunnel. The ceiling was leaking heavily, and a stream was flowing right in the middle. Its water gurgled rhythmically. The girl walked quickly, her heels clicking on the concrete floor. Each step broke the silence, creating a sharp, rhythmic sound. The guy asked why she believed that the criminal was hiding here. Mr. Zhang said he was foolish to trust her guess. He was already beginning to regret going to this place. The woman continued to look at her feet indignantly. Suddenly, Miss Jung stopped. She crouched down and pointed at a small bloodstain on the floor. Then the girl stood up and clearly wanted to show her companion the evidence she had found. However, the man took her wrist and licked her finger, confirming that it was definitely blood. Miss Jung was simply shocked by this behavior. She asked if it was necessary to check it that way. After apologizing, the guy said that this was just a professional habit. Since the girl's reaction was too violent, Mr. Zhang hugged her from behind and covered her mouth with his hand. He asked her to be quiet, because they could be heard. Approaching the end of the tunnel, the man ordered his companion to stand behind him. Preparing for the fight, he pulled out a pistol and asked her not to move without his permission. Coming out of a long passage, the couple heard crying. On the square, they saw that same vampire. He sat on his knees with his back bent, pitifully hugging the frightened child. Mr. Zhang stood tensely, trying to think of a plan for further action. The girl standing next to her covered her mouth with her hand in amazement. She suspected that something was wrong. The look in the vampire's eyes haunted her. From the look in his eyes, it didn't seem like he intended to harm the boy in any way. Miss Jung tried hard to figure out who this person reminded her of. When real tears began to appear, it dawned on her. She realized that only a mother could look at her child like that. However, Mr. Jung had already taken aim and was ready to shoot. The woman screamed and tried to stop him, but it was too late. A loud shot sounded and the bullet hit the target. The criminal screamed with a piercing scream and fell to the ground, leaving traces of blood underneath her. The baby fell out of her hands. Without lowering the barrel, the man slowly approached the wounded person. He advised his worried companion not to believe in their tears. Vampires were excellent at pretending. Then footsteps were heard, and Mr. Zhang's subordinates appeared from all directions. They surrounded the desperate woman, leaving her not the slightest chance to escape. One of them came close to the criminal, putting the gun to her forehead. She just cried quietly. Suddenly, he tore the silicone mask off her face, and a look of astonishment appeared on his face. The man turned to the boss and said that it was a human, not a vampire. The faces of everyone present instantly froze in surprise. Sitting on her knees, the woman began to tremble violently. There was genuine pain in her voice as she began to heartbreakingly insult the police. Her words were full of rage and despair. The criminal could not understand why they did not sleep her child, as they had just slept this one. She was beside herself with anger because the other children survived, but her child did not. Screams were heard from the crowd of journalists. One said it was a mistake. Another shouted that it was a vampire. Everyone was wondering what really happened. Zhang Yang heard the voice of a subordinate behind him, who said that they had found information about the woman. He continued that this happened in October last year. Around the time the vampire attack incident occurred, that time everyone was saved, except for one child. He added that we showed up too late and handed over the newspaper, in which there was an article that the 24th of October is 2000 of an unknown year. At 1836, after a sudden vampire attack, ten people were injured, one five-year-old boy was killed, he was found upon arrival. After this incident, the child's mother could not come to terms with his death. Six months after the accident, she divorced her husband and quit her job. Over time, she developed a mental disorder and she decided to sneak into an amusement park, turn into a vampire and kidnap a child. After this, the woman wanted to kill the child, so that this boy's mother could feel the same pain she felt herself. The vampire hunter was interrupted by shouts from journalists. They shouted that they were taking a suspect. Look, it's a woman, they shouted. 
For what reasons did she do this? The police asked not to interfere with the arrest process. The woman tried to escape from the police's hands. The mentally ill mother ran up to Zhang and slapped him. She said that she recognized him and that he immediately returned the child to her. Yuna's subordinate tried to take her away, but the vampire hunter told him not to touch her. I waited for what she would say next. The woman screamed why he didn't save the child, that her child died because of his incompetence, but he himself remained alive and well. The suspect screamed that he didn't deserve to be a vampire hunter, that it was Zhang who killed her son. The hunter said he admits his guilt, that a woman can hit him if it makes her feel better. With the words that you said it yourself, the woman pulled out a knife and stabbed him in the chest. Zheng grabbed the knife but suspiciously shouted, Let me go! Who are you here? The nurse told her to calm down. She said that she was also a mother and understood her feelings, but the woman objected that Zheng would never understand her. The nurse interrupted her by saying that she wanted to kill her. So why didn't she kill her? Most likely because when she was ready to cut her throat, she looked into the child's eyes and remembered her own deceased. She continued that even if she kills him now, then her own son will not come back to life. Was it really her desire that her son consider his mother a vengeful murderer? She asked how she was different from the vampires who killed her child. The woman with tears in her eyes shouted that she would never forgive them. Zhang said thank you to the nurse, but at this time it is unclear where the little girl appeared. It was Seiya. Mom asked the girl where her brother was. But Seiya answered, she thought that her brother was with her mother. Zheng and Zhang started calling Shi Mei together. He responded and they saw him on the Ferris wheel. The boy plaintively screamed to be taken out of there. He continued that when he and his sister were separated. He immediately climbed onto this carousel, but I didn't know that this thing would take off and stop in the air. He asked Zhang to take it off immediately, because he is afraid of heights. But the hunter took out his phone and started taking pictures of the boy. And he told Shi Mei that you don't see this every day, and you need to show this to your mother and sister so that they have dirt on him. The boy started crying and screaming for Zhang to take him down immediately, that he is very scared. The hunter took it off. The boy saw blood on his chest and said so, but our hero objected that it was just a scratch. The boy whispered a quiet thank you. Zhang's subordinate ran over and said that they had found the photographer's camera, that there might be pictures of today's incident. It might be right to give it to the owner. The hunter objected and said that he should look first. There were pictures of Seiya on the camera. Zhang went to put Shimei in the car with his sister. Mom said she would come to them soon. The nurse was very worried that the man would now guess about the children and to prevent this from happening. She suddenly kissed him, and the camera fell to the ground. Zhang was very surprised by the sudden kiss, but he became angry when he saw the broken camera. Zhang bent down and picked up the camera, said that she would take it for repairs and wished the hunter good night. She was glad that the man did not suspect anything. And mom did a great job, and he made a remark that she attacked a police officer and that was wrong. Zhang thought the nurse was crazy. And how did she know that the suspect would be hiding there? The man took out his phone and called you. He asked to find information on one person. The interlocutor asked who we would talk about. The hunter was surprised by the fact that happened to Zheng in childhood. Now he understood why there were no other pictures in her album except her own, and he reasoned that she was always cheerful. From her behavior, it was impossible to understand what happened to her in childhood. The three men showed Zhang's employee the crime scene. It looked very unusual, even strange. They said local authorities were confident that only the hunter and his team could solve the case. Our hero's assistant told those present that his boss had a lot to do. Therefore, there is no need to dump all the work on them, just like the incident in the park, that he didn't even turn out to be a vampire. But representatives of local authorities claim that this time everything was completely different, and it is our hero who must investigate this case. Suddenly a hunter appeared and asked where the body was, and was anything unusual found on the corpse? They showed him the victims. There was a bite mark on the back. Zhang was very surprised. After all, the same sign was found on two previously found corpses. She concluded that this was a series of ritual murders. The authorities did not understand what was being discussed, but they were sure of one thing and their thoughts were interrupted by the voice of our hero, who found a needle on the victim's hand and pulled it out. And at hand, they pulled out a newspaper clipping about a vampire hunter apprehending a suspect from an amusement park. The men simultaneously said that this is why the authorities believe that a vampire hunter should be involved in this case. They are sure that the killer is challenging our hero. Our hero replied that he was sure the killer was somewhere nearby. In a pet store, two girls were reading the news on their phones. They were outraged by what happened. Not only did the vampire drink all the blood from the victim, but he also left a terrible mark. The visitor said that if things continue to be like this, she will stop leaving the house altogether. The nurse came out and reported that the transfusion was successful. 
The doctor told the owner to monitor her pet's diet more closely. One of the ladies turned to the doctor and asked if he had seen the latest news. The man replied that he did not read such terrible news, because then he can't sleep after such horror. Their conversation was interrupted by a strange sound. The doctor said that it was his pet asking to eat. One girl continued the conversation that she was very pleased with the service of the pet store. It seems like they opened recently, but the attitude towards animals is simply wonderful. The thought flashed through my head that the doctor was very attractive. You can add him to your chat. The man turned to the girls with a satisfied face. He said that he really hopes that they will become regular customers. Zhang received a call from an assistant, saying that another body had been found. On the back is the same sign as the previous ones. But the killer did not leave any evidence or traces, and therefore the investigation is still ongoing. Nevertheless, it was possible to find out that all the dead turned out to be criminals on the run, or murderers and arsonists, and everyone was wanted. This report was completed, and our hunter wondered what this guy was trying to do. The man pressed the door code and saw a message that the code was incorrect. I couldn't understand why, because he entered all the numbers correctly. His thoughts were interrupted by the voice of Jung, who was indignant at him to stop breaking down the door of her apartment, and she pointed him in the other direction. Our hero thought about the fact that he did not see the girl after the kiss, and the nurse thought that she was very embarrassed. But I tried not to show my feelings. The hunter said that he did not understand how he could make a mistake again. He pressed the code for his door, and it opened. He happily said that he could finally go in. Upon entering my room, I heard a woman's voice saying that she had already taken the camera from repair. She invited me over to give it to her. Our couple went into the room and sat down on the sofa. The nurse gave him the camera and said that she had reviewed the videos and deleted the ones in which Xiao Men looked strange. The hunter looked around the room and asked where the pranksters were. Why aren't they at home? The children's mother replied that the kindergarten they went to had started working again and she took them there. Jung's phone started playing and Dr. Luo was calling her. When the heroine answered, a male voice asked, Does she remember that she asked him to find him a new apartment? That he has a real estate agent friend and can help, when it is convenient for her to go and look at the options, and our interlocutor really wants to accompany her. The woman replied that she would have free time at the end of the week. The doctor said he would call for her on the weekend. The conversation ended there. Our hero, upset, asked if she had really decided to move. And in response, I heard that they had been living here for a long time. She wants to find an apartment closer to the kindergarten. Zhang became even more sad and thought that she would no longer live here. And for some reason, he is not indifferent to her moving but he began to reassure himself that this did not concern him. At the hospital, Jung's staff thanked her for being present for the operation. They said that I needed to rest very well after such a difficult day. Our heroine replied that this was not only her merit, that everyone did a very good job. I wished you a great day and said goodbye. But when she turned to the door, she ran into an unfamiliar man and her purse fell out. All the contents flew out of the bag. The stranger apologized to the lady. She replied that it was nothing. The man really liked the nurse and thought she was amazing. The stranger picked up the dropped photo. He began to look at him with interest. It depicted little Saya. The blonde thought how cute she was. He also thought that it tasted like... But Jung interrupted his thoughts. The girl said it was her daughter. The guy looked at her interestedly. He said it was hard to believe because Jung was too young and looked like a student. The nurse blushed slightly and thanked her for the compliment. She thought that this young man must be very good. The handsome guy said that he has a pet store. He handed her a business card and added that children really love different animals. They can come to look and choose someone. Jung thanked him for the invitation, and the blonde said that it was fate, so he would simply have to give them a discount. The girl left after saying goodbye, and the guy looked after her thoughtfully. The young woman thought that he was much better than the emotionless brunette. Jung suddenly caught herself thinking that she had already begun to compare them. Late in the evening, the boss returned home and saw that the door to the apartment was open. There were scattered things on the floor. He, sensing something was wrong, took out a pistol. A bat blocked his way. She began to squeak loudly and flap her wings. In bewilderment, the boss walked up to the curtain and pulled it aside. There he saw a guy sitting in the bathroom with a large glass. The glass was filled with something red. The stranger said hi to him and that he was just in time. Then, smiling brazenly, he asked the boss to rub his back. The brunette, not paying attention to the mockery, asked him who killed those people. The blonde silently rose from the bath and took a towel. He said that he really saw a noble vampire hunter in front of him. He said that even his robe here smells of justice. The boss couldn't stand it and grabbed the guy by the throat, pressing him to the wall. He demanded that he answer the question he asked. The blonde asked why he was so excited. 
and suddenly, looking into the boss's face, he recognized his brother. Changing his tone, he asked how he was doing. After all, he is neither human nor a vampire. It must be hard for him, he said. He also added that those people were his gift to him. The vampire held out his hands and told the boss to arrest him. The brunette looked at him with regret and called him crazy. But the handsome guy said that he likes it when they call him that. He said those people were bad and deserved to die. The boss grabbed him by the throat again and shouted that it was not for him to judge this. To which the blonde laughed and said that they both destroy criminals. Only one destroys people, and the second destroys vampires. Then he added that the brunette also kills vampires without trial. Therefore, he does not see any difference between them. Besides, they are of the same blood as him, although only half. He said it was all due to his mother's dirty blood, and that if not for her, he would not have been deprived of the clan mark. The boss's eyes darkened and the blood in his veins began to boil. But then Jung's voice was heard. She stood on the threshold saying sorry. The blonde said that it was the nurse who came. The girl said that she knocked on the door, but no one opened it. So she decided to go in since the door was not locked. The blonde stood in only a robe, resting his head on the brunette's shoulder. The girl thought that something was wrong with these guys. Apparently they have something to hide, she decided. The girl reported that her boiler was broken. For this reason, she decided to use Yang Yun's bathroom. Pointing to a crack in the wall and debris on the floor, she wondered if these were the consequences of the earthquake she had recently heard about. Zheng noticed a white-haired guy and wondered if he was in the hospital that day. After a short pause, Yang Pan replied that he was very glad that he was so well imprinted in her memory. He explained that he was Yang Yun's brother and had come from far away to see him. According to him, this was the only way to meet, since they had not seen each other since childhood. The blonde pointed to the cracks on the wall and explained that they were going to discuss how to fix them. But they disagreed and quarreled. The girl turned to Yang, expressing surprise that he had such a sweet brother. The guy was clearly not happy with this expression, since the meaning of the word cute clearly did not suit Yang. He expressed his dissatisfaction by saying that he had never heard such nonsense. The blonde pretended not to understand what nonsense Yang Yun was talking about. Xia ran up to Zheng, holding a picture of a rabbit in her hands. Pointing her finger at her, the little girl begged her mother to buy the same rabbit. Mom explained that a rabbit is not just a toy, because it requires careful care and great responsibility. Jen wanted to make sure her daughter could handle it. The girl nodded to her mother, confirming her readiness for such responsibility. Young Pan. The guy said that the animal store belongs to him, so Sia and her mother can come any day and choose any rabbit. Zhang didn't understand what was happening, but soon noticed the white-haired guy's gaze and felt something suspicious in him. It became clear to him that Yang Pan was up to something. He realized that Sia was in danger, and it was necessary to get them out as quickly as possible. He said he was tired and needed rest, so he asked them to leave. The girl was indignant because she wanted to take a bath first. The guy asked her to forget about it. Jung became even more indignant, not understanding what happened to Yang Yun, and again asked to be allowed to use the bathroom. He strictly ordered her not to make him repeat it twice and close the door on her. Jung was very unhappy about this and did not understand how there could be such a big difference between the brothers. Exhaling, the guy asked Yang Pan what he was doing in the hospital. He replied that he had nothing to say and therefore offered to drink. He asked if he had any drinks and without waiting for an answer demanded to hurry up. Otherwise he would not tell anything. After Yang Pan tasted the hospital blood, he spat it out indignantly. He couldn't understand how Yang Yun could drink something like that. The brunette explained that if this is enough to maintain life, then there is no point in killing people for their blood. The vampire explained that he was doing this for fun. He enjoyed dominating and suppressing his victims, thus emphasizing the dignity of their clan's blood. Not putting on a friendly smile, the blonde angrily remarked that he almost forgot that Yang Yun was not one of them. After Yang Pan's monologue, the brunette asked if he was finished and ordered him to leave the apartment. He added that if he didn't stop killing people, Yang Yun would personally kill him. Smirking, the blonde asked if he had fallen in love with that woman since he was so worried about her. The brunette ordered him to stop talking nonsense. Yang Pan replied that in that case, he should hurry up and grab her for himself, because he was very interested in what her blood tasted like. The brunette rudely made it clear that the white-haired man should not approach her. He didn't care that Jen was his neighbor, because he wouldn't allow her to be harmed. Pretending to look delighted, the guy sarcastically praised his brother, telling him to tell him what happened between them. The vampire added that even if Yang Yun did not tell anything, he would find a way to find out through his own methods. The vampire stared at his brother, tightly clutching the bag of donor blood. In his usual manner, he asked his brother about his feelings for Zheng Yin. Yang Yun guessed what all these questions were about. 
He promised to deal with the blonde if he touched her. In a fit of anger, he snatched the treasured food from his brother. The hunter pointed sharply to the door. It was high time to say goodbye to him, but he promised his parents. The brother continued to manipulate, wanting to get the treasured package back. But his magical power had not affected the hunter for a long time. He muttered something for a long time, but his strength left him, and Yang stood his ground. The vampire was angry and hungry. All that remained for him was to go in search of food. Yes, it was just animal blood, but until evening there is no other choice. He realized that he could quickly quench his thirst. The nearest supermarket for vampires was literally in the yard. Shimei and Sia's attention was drawn to the small, fluffy rabbits that they adored and had long dreamed of. Zheng Yin sometimes left the kids here while she went out for cocoa. There was no limit to my delight. The children exclaimed loudly, giggled, comparing each other to rabbits, and looked like absolutely ordinary children, not realizing that the animals were just food for them. They were so carried away by the choice of new friends that they did not hear the vampire approaching them, who was insanely hungry. The blonde was looking forward to his lunch, which he had not even counted on. Unexpected luck. Ian, suspecting that the hungry blonde would go looking for his victim, rushed after him, but when he approached the pet store window, he was horrified. Behind the glass, among cages with animals, stood a vampire, and in front of him were children, children of Zheng. The hunter was angry with himself. He must save them, protect them from the vampire. Meanwhile, a hypnosis session began in the pet store. The smell of food made the blonde's head spin. He gently touched Sia's palm. Under the guise of a salesman, the vampire, using all his charm and charm, was involved in a children's game. Young understood that it was time to hurry, but at that moment someone jokingly called out to him. He recognized her voice. A girl was approaching him, and it was Zheng. He looked back. A nurse approached him, smiling charmingly. She joked and was in a great mood because now she would see her kids. The girl was beautiful. Her pink dress gently hugged her slender figure, and her long hair fell in soft waves over her shoulders, giving her a mysterious and attractive look. The scent of flowers and spring emanated from her. She asked what brought him here, and Young, having come to his senses for a minute, told her that he was just passing by. He let her go ahead, continuing to admire her pale and smooth skin like marble. Walking past him, the girl suddenly felt him touch her hand for a second. Zheng shuddered. What's going on? She thought. The nurse stopped but didn't turn around, waiting for Yang's answer. The hunter simply wanted to warn her that communicating with her brother could be dangerous, but he was still searching for words. Taking his warning completely differently, the girl sharply replied that slandering her brother was a bad idea. But the hunter could not allow the nurse and her children to be in danger, and added that the blonde was not entirely adequate. But no, this is too much. The nurse got angry. She no longer listened to him. She, who was used to telling the truth face to face, was clearly outraged by his attitude towards her brother. He turned sharply and, preparing to leave, again tried to warn her of the danger. Jung sighed. She realized that she had responded harshly and wanted to apologize, but Young, disappointed and upset, walked away. The nurse did not understand why a man whom she knew well would speak so poorly of his brother. Perhaps something personal. The girl thought about it. Day gave way to night. The lights were on in the windows of the multi-story penthouse, but the bell rang in the apartment where people were already sleeping. The doorbell rang quite insistently, and when he woke up he did not understand where the nasty ringing was coming from. Torn out of sleep, the hunter tried to understand who could have disturbed him at such a late time, because except for the vampire, no one had ever been in these apartments. He sat up, trying to wake up. He didn't count on his brother's return, he thought, but his neighbor. Perhaps she came to apologize for her tone. He opened the door, and what he saw shocked him. Shimei stood on the threshold. He didn't understand what was happening, how the baby ended up near his door. The hunter tried to concentrate, but the boy cried louder and louder finally dispelling the remnants of the hunter's sleep. Only one thing was clear. My mother was missing. Young looked at him and realized that what he was so afraid of had happened, what he had so desperately warned the children's mother about. Had the vile brother realized his plans? Yang thought bitterly. But to confirm his terrible guesses, a message arrived on his phone that Jen was in the hands of a vampire. But she was alive, and that's the main thing. Horrible photographs flashed on the phone screen. The hunter understood that the girl was suffering because of him, there were elements of revenge in everything. The night was especially dark, only the moon shone brightly, filling everything around with a silvery light. The queen of the night was the girl's only companion. It was unbearable to watch. He mercilessly tied her arms and legs with rough rope, causing them to turn red and swell. 
The blindfold did not allow the girl to see where she was and who the person was who did this to her. The natural courage of the nurse sought answers to questions. Fear paralyzed her body and she began to cry. Zhen didn't understand why he was doing this, but she mentally called out to the person who was not there. Another moment and the girl felt like she was being hung upside down. The wind rocked the body. The time has come to say goodbye to life and children. He recalled the best moments of his life. But most of all, the nurse thought about the secret of her children. How will the life of her special children turn out? Gathering her remaining strength, the girl screamed. But her call for help was heard only by the stars and the darkness of the night. The merciless vampire enjoyed what was happening. The blonde craved emotions, because a man, a brother, stood in his way, and he wanted revenge. The vampire recalled how his brother did not want to tell him about his feelings for Zhang, but now he will beg him to leave the girl alive. He wanted blood, he was hungry again, and only by killing the girl could he feel lighter. The hunter began to call the nurse, but the only answer was that the subscriber was unavailable. The boy asked with tears in his eyes, because everything will be fine with mommy. Zhang asked where her sister was. She may replied that Xia was sleeping, and therefore did not want to wake her up. Our hero, in a commanding tone, told the child to take care of the girl. He ordered that the children should not leave the house. The boy wanted to object and said what about his mother. The hunter replied that he would definitely find her and everything would be fine. When our hero went outside, he immediately called his brother and asked where she was. I heard advice addressed to me that I need to use the skills of a bloodhound. In a menacing tone, the man asked his interlocutor that if even one hair fell from Jen's head, then he will kill the vampire. The woman screamed what was happening and asked to be lowered to the ground, and there were thoughts in my head why she was calling him. In principle, it doesn't matter who can help her, no matter who it is, but she really wanted him to hear her. The hunter turned to Yang Yuyun and shouted what you did to her, but in response, he heard that everything was fine with his beloved. After a short pause, I added for now, and so that her lover does not worry that in five minutes he will let her go, but I'm not sure that she will like such freedom and hung up. The vampire did not like to wait for others and wondered why his brother had not come yet. Time ran out and he cut the rope with scissors. Jung flew down. Our hero managed to catch his beloved, but she was blindfolded. The woman did not see her savior, but she was very familiar with his smell and therefore asked who he was. The kidnapper watched the couple from above, and he couldn't understand why she was so important to his brother. The hunter sat the nurse on a bench and began to untie the ropes on her arms. Jung wanted to remove the blindfold, but he stopped her. With resentment in her voice, the woman asked why she couldn't see his face. Maybe he's ugly, and thanked her savior. The man took off the blindfold, but she couldn't see anything yet. There was fog in his eyes. She asked if it was Zhang Yun. Early in the morning, Sheng had difficulty opening her eyes. The first thing she saw was the doctor's face. He looked at her joyfully, then asked how she was feeling. Calling her by name, he said that she had finally woken up. Sheng looked at him with an uncomprehending look. She said Dr. Luo's name in surprise, and then sitting up with difficulty, she asked why she was here. The doctor said she was found unconscious. Then she asked what happened to her, and then her memory gradually began to return. Some fragments of memories flashed before my eyes. The girl saw herself lying tied hand and foot, then next to you is a man. She asked the doctor about some person. The doctor, who did not understand anything, clarified who the nurse was asking about. The young woman wanted to know who brought her here. The doctor replied that he did not know, but she was found near the hospital doors. A brunette appeared at the entrance to the ward. Seeing Zheng, he thought that she had already woken up. Reflecting on what happened, the girl came to the conclusion that the person who saved her was there. She wanted to find out who it was. The doctor asked Zheng if she had hit her head. Tests carried out showed that she had a concussion. The girl was thoughtfully silent. The doctor called her by name again, but she didn't react at all. Luo asked again if she could hear him. The nurse was still in some kind of daze. The doctor asked her to remember what happened. He wanted to understand why she behaved this way. The boss stood thoughtfully, not daring to come in. Suddenly someone behind him asked him if he needed help. The doctor and Zheng turned around and saw a man standing next to the nurse. Zheng immediately recognized him as Yang Yun. Luo opened his mouth in surprise and asked who this guy was, to which the girl replied that he was her neighbor. The doctor was puzzled by the young woman's answer. A voice came from behind him, saying that the operating room was ready and everyone was waiting for him. It was the voice of a young nurse standing next to the brunette. The doctor replied that he was already on his way, and Jung said that he would definitely come to see her later. The girl asked the doctor not to worry about her. She said that she was fine and that he should be in surgery. Luo said okay, and as he passed by the boss he looked at him intently. 
Yang Yun also looked at the doctor. Zheng saw 17 missed calls from the brunette on her phone. She asked why he called her so often last night. Yang, thoughtful, said that her children were too noisy and he could not sleep. Apparently this question was unexpected for him. And the blonde replied that everything was clear. She thought that she had been mistaken in mistaking him for the man who had saved her. Then she asked why he was here. Young replied that he had come to visit a friend. The girl said she was kidnapped last night. The brunette thoughtfully repeated her words. The nurse added that this happened when she was returning home. At first, the girl felt some kind of sweet aroma. Then she became dizzy and lost consciousness. Zheng decided that was when she hit her head. When Sheng woke up, she found herself tied hand and foot. Moreover, she was also hanging upside down from something. After some time, the girl felt that she was falling from a great height. Thoughtful, the blonde said. It seems that the one who kidnapped her was a vampire. The hunter asked the nurse if she was sure that a vampire had kidnapped her. Zheng replied yes. Before she lost consciousness, she vaguely saw a shadow on the ground. This silhouette cannot belong to a person. She continued that when she was falling, some mysterious person saved her. Our hero was very surprised and asked how this mysterious man was. The woman said that if it weren't for the savior, she would already be dead. She doubts that an ordinary person could do this, but unfortunately, she did not see the face of the savior. But at that moment, I felt a very seductive and sweet aroma from him, similar to blood. Therefore, Jung thinks that the kidnapper and the savior are both vampires, and she was wondering why he decided to kidnap her. Instead of drinking blood, he did this. They were interrupted by Zhang's brother, who suddenly appeared. He screamed that he had been restless since he found out that the nurse was in the hospital. I asked my victim what happened to her, and if everything was okay with her. The woman wanted to answer, but at that time the savior shouted to his brother to get out. But the vampire replied that it was not up to him to decide whether to leave or stay. Our hero asked in an angry tone what he was trying to achieve. In response, he heard that he just came to visit his sister, and that she belonged not only to him. The woman addressed the savior by name and asked him to leave her brother alone. She asked why he always clings to him. The hunter replied in an offended tone that he did not understand why Zheng was protecting him. The answer was very simple. The fact that the vampire came to visit the nurse means he is her friend, and that is why she is protecting him. And Zhang is constantly opposed to his brother. Our heroine does not understand such a relationship between relatives. They should help each other, not fight. The woman took both of their hands and made them shake hands, but it seemed to our hero that she had a fever. The hand was red. The nurse replied that she was fine. She asks them to make peace, but she needs to rest and see you later. The door to the room closed, and the men found themselves alone. The vampire turned to his brother and said that Jen is very funny, and now he understands him. Why does he like her? He added that he found a worthy girl, and now the kidnapper is jealous of the savior. He likes her more and more. Big brother's toys are always better than his. Zhang had a knife in his hand and said angrily that he was becoming very jealous. Zhang wanted to stab his brother and he replied that because of this nurse he was very easy to get angry, and if she is very dear to him, he should guard her very well. Otherwise he will steal again at any moment. The hunter said that if this happens again he will definitely kill him. The vampire waved and left. Our hero's phone rang. An assistant called and said that an incident had occurred on the outskirts of the city, and that he should come urgently. Zheng urgently went to the outskirts. The nurse thought about what had happened, like the hand of the man who saved her, which touched her back and the warmth from Yang Yun's palm that day when she kissed him. It was the same feeling. Is such a coincidence possible, since the hunter is not a vampire? Or among the bloodsuckers there are those who protect people? Perhaps our hero was just like that. Why is she comparing the guy who saved her with Yang Yun? Her thoughts were interrupted by an employee who said that the new head of the hospital had arrived and was holding a meeting. If she feels better, she can join. Zheng replied that she felt good. She would now change clothes and join. Then she continued to think that vampires are not. She needed to throw these thoughts out of her head. When the hunter arrived on the outskirts of the city, he saw a tied-up vampire, who said that the pathetic little people couldn't resist them, that their time will come soon. Our hero did not understand what he was talking about, and said that if he did not tell it properly, then a difficult death awaited him. The vampire tried to attack our hero, but then an assistant came running and shot him. Zhang reassured his employee by saying that he simply wanted to save his boss's life, and he told him to show him what he was going to do, and he took him to the vampire laboratory. He was very interested in what the savages were doing. Zhang asked his assistant that everything needed to be taken away, and checked thoroughly, and at this time, Zhang wrote a message to the hunter that there was food in the refrigerator, so that he can warm her up and feed the children. 
When he saw this SMS, he thought that he could make an exception for food, and he called Xiao Ming and said that he would come soon. From the receiver, you could hear crying and screams that they were wounded. And then he said loudly for the children to tell them where they were, and he would come to them very soon. And he heard in response that they were in his older brother's pet store. A vampire appeared and asked the child who he was talking to, that he really hopes that young Yoon will make it to the party. In the assembly hall of the hospital, in the light of the spotlights, the new head was giving a speech behind the counter. Handsome, tall, smart. This is exactly how the hospital staff saw him. Having finished his speech, he ordered to get to work. The female medical staff were crazy about the new doctor. The nurses were talking about how handsome he was and that one of them should hook up with him. Confused, Xianer asked the girls not to talk nonsense but to get to work. During the conversation, the new boss quietly approached the girls. Nurse Sheng was embarrassed and thought that he had heard their entire conversation. He called her over to him. It became noticeable that she was embarrassed. The rest of the girls stood aside and laughed at the situation. The new boss introduced himself to the girl. It was Li Wenhui, a specialist in the field of genetic engineering. After a pause, he asked Sheng why she went to work instead of staying home due to her recent injury. The girl was very surprised and embarrassed at the same time, thanking for the concern and assured that everything was fine. The young man insisted that she still go home to rest. Sheng was struck by the thought that he was a good boss and a kind person. But the thought couldn't leave her. How could he know her that he was so lenient towards her? These thoughts never left the girl. She thought that most likely he saw her name on the name tag of her robe. Leaving the hospital, the girl knew that her children would be glad that she was freed earlier. Taking out her phone, the girl saw that her children were not at home, but in the pet store. Sheng was surprised. Most likely they look at the rabbits again. They loved them so much. She went to pick them up. At the pet store, her daughter showed the doctor a puppy that had injured its leg. She was very worried about him. Hearing the rumbling in the girl's stomach, the doctor kindly offered her a snack. The baby didn't mind. The girl wanted to leave some lunch for her uncle because she was worried about him. The doctor didn't mind. A young man bursts into the door of the pet store screaming, and he takes the frightened girl from the doctor's hands. As it turned out, this was not a doctor at all, but a bandit who wanted to steal the baby. He was stopped in time. Taking the girl to him, the angry guy hit the scoundrel in the face. He fell. Daughter Sheng is now safe. The savior asked where her brother had gone and if everything was okay with him. The girl managed to say that he was bleeding when her mother came through the door and fell to her knees at the news. Sheng was glad that her daughter was okay and was no longer in danger, and the criminal was punished. The guy was surprised to see Sheng in front of him. He didn't understand what she was doing there. The girl immediately rushed to her daughter, asking what happened to her brother and why he was bleeding. Immediately, a boy with a bandage on his knee appeared from behind the door. Perplexed, Sheng ran to hug him. Like any mother, she was glad that everything was okay with her son. The boy was also happy to see his family. The little girl cried out that her uncle had beaten her older brother, and her mother burst into tears. I couldn't contain my emotions. The boy got angry at the grown-up and was ready to fight with his mother's offender. At this moment, he did not feel like a child. Their savior was perplexed, realizing the danger the boy was in. He was afraid to think what could happen next. Sheng was wondering how it all happened. It turned out that the son was saving a puppy who had fallen from a slope. Hoping to help him, he rolled down after the puppy, injuring his knee. He couldn't just leave a living creature to die. Continuing his story, the kid thanked his older brother for helping him save the puppy, and he in turn asked the boy to be more careful next time. The mother thanked her son's rescuer. He was fine and that's the main thing. The guy was a little embarrassed. The boy couldn't stop. He kept telling him how great his savior was and how fast he was. The kid was wondering if he knew Kung Fu. The boy was not taken aback and said that if children suddenly find themselves in trouble, he turns into a superhero. The little girl immediately screamed that she wanted to go to her older brother and immediately ran to him. He offered to go eat, since lunch was getting cold, and at the same time show his rescue abilities to the children. The cute little girl was crazy about this proposal. After all, she was already very hungry. The guy in the black jacket was alarmed by the fact that the rescuer didn't help people for nothing and also by his overly feigned kindness. He still couldn't figure out what his goal was. What did he want from these children? Why did he attract their attention? Sheng asked the guy to be kinder to people and offered to join the meal. Everyone was very hungry, but he still insisted that the girl and the children go home as soon as possible. The nurse persuaded the guy to leave his grudge and go to lunch together. He followed her in bewilderment. He was a little offended that Sheng and the children did not understand the whole situation. He didn't understand this. Seeing how the boy was worried about her children, she promised to cook him a delicious dinner. 
Finally, he melted and moved away from his emotions a little. Having agreed to dinner, he thought that as long as he was with them, Yang Pen would not harm them. For Yang Pen, everything turned out to be more complicated. His plan did not work, although he calculated all the steps in advance. While everyone was having lunch, Young changed the boy's bandage and warned him not to get it wet. The kid reassured him because his mother is a nurse. In parting, Sheng thanked Yang for lunch and for the bandage. Since it was already late, she and the children went home. He was glad to see them again. The guy in the black jacket still didn't trust him. He's a bit too suspicious. Young asked the girl to come visit with the children more often and added that she would also visit them if possible. Sheng scolded the guy in the black jacket for urging her on, but he decided to stand. She suggested that if he suddenly wants to go say goodbye to his brother, then he should hurry up, to which I received a negative answer. Young noticed that there was something attractive in the blood of this boy, and he condemned his brother for not even noticing it. Behind Yang was a huge figure in an inconspicuous gray jacket and mask. It was the new head of the hospital. Young was already waiting for him, to which he apologized to his master for the delay, because he was taking over the duties of the head. The head of the hospital was frightened by Young's behavior, to which he reassured him by the fact that he was not the only one who felt the power of the boy's blood. The gentleman ordered not to interfere with his fun, and if suddenly something happened, then he did not see him in the city. The head was at a loss. Young warned the head not to touch Nurse Sheng and her children, and everything else is at his discretion. He was confused that they were his target, but at the same time he was glad that he did not interfere in local affairs. It looks like the original chapter plan will not be affected, at least for now. Sun Shane was impressed with Young. Everyone praised him for how good he was, but the guy in the black jacket really didn't like it, and her daughter warned him that he should feel danger from him. Now this is his rival. The guy didn't like their words, saying why is he his rival, and they call him brother and me uncle. Here, with a smile on her face, Shane intervened and asked if he was jealous of the name as the children call him. The boy denied this, but immediately blushed, which everyone noticed. It was clear that he was uncomfortable. At that moment, there was an explosion. He smelled blood and ordered Shane and the children to run away from here. She objected and said that she was actually a nurse, and suddenly someone needed help. The girl noticed that the guy was running fast, but she really couldn't take the children with her. The voice of her friend was heard from behind the veil of smoke. She said that a fire was caused by a vampire attack. Shane asked that girl to look after her children while she looked at what happened. She apologized to the children and went to investigate the situation. Maybe someone needs a doctor. The children were worried about their mother, asking her to be careful. She convinced them that everything would be fine with her. And there was also a stinky uncle who would protect her if anything happened. Shane's friend asked the children to leave here. It was too dangerous, when suddenly the head of the hospital appeared out of nowhere, asking if he could disturb them for a minute. Choking from the acrid smoke, Shane wondered if everything was okay with Yang. How does he jump out of the darkness? She froze with fear, because he turned out to be that same vampire. The vampire's corpse scared Shane to death. She was sure that Jian Yun was somewhere here. Seeing Yang, she could not understand what he had in his hands. Taking a closer look, she realized that it was hair. He turned to the girl and ordered her to keep her head down. A vampire attempted to kill Shane from behind, and Young neutralized him with one blow. The girl heard Jian Yun's voice. He started screaming, asking why she came here and that she didn't belong here. Asking if she was injured, he put his arm around her shoulders. He asked if she was injured. Jian said that the vampires were neutralized, and the civilians were hiding in the supermarket opposite. Medical help will arrive soon. I asked the girl to help me. The guy took the girl to a safe place and said that he would go check something else. She was against it because John was wounded. She believed that he needed help. Shane told him that he should go with her to the hospital because he wouldn't be able to bandage himself. While arguing with each other, they saw a wounded man on the road. The nurse gave him first aid, but insisted that he be examined at the hospital. The man thanked the girl and guy for their help. John Yoon objected that they were not a couple, but the man was sure that the guy was just shy. Shane insisted on examining the guy's wound. He resisted. The girl forcibly unbuttoned her shirt and saw deep cuts. She was outraged that the young man was so inattentive to a serious injury, although for him it's just a minor scratch. She took out medicines from the first aid kit and treated the wound. He noticed that she was very angry and promised to be more careful next time. Shane's phone rang. These were her children. They said that something was wrong with their friend's mother and they were scared. After talking with the children, Sheng said that she needed to help their friend's mother. She suddenly felt bad, and the children were scared. Zheng Yun, holding the wound and clenching his teeth in pain, followed Shane. She said that he could not restrain his emotions if he was hurt. On the way, she heard a man's voice. It was an employee from the hospital, Dr. Lo. She was glad that he was here too. 
and she said that there was one patient nearby who needed help. He assured that he would help. The girl handed Zhang over to Dr. Luo, but he flatly refused to stay with him and wanted to help Shane. She yelled at him that he was still staying with the doctor. The doctor himself was surprised by the emotionality of the young girl. He had never seen her like this before. Zhang assured the doctor that he had made her feel brave and independent. Dr. Lo suggested going to the hospital and starting treatment, having clarified the moment that the guy will need special medicine. He asked not to interfere in other people's affairs. Shane knew the only way back to her friend's house. Her son looked out from around the corner of the house and said that their friend's mother had fainted. The girl began to ask her son what happened. He said that a stranger approached her and asked about the way she showed him, after which she felt bad and fell to the ground. A friend of her children asked if his mom would be okay. Shane calmed him down and asked the children to go to their house. She took the woman to the hospital. The chief told Shane that she was fine. There were no injuries and her vital signs were normal. The doctor suggested that it could be a coma caused by shock due to a vampire attack. The girl was glad that the diagnosis was made so quickly, and she assumed that it could have been poisoning or kidnapping. The chief doctor said that there was no such option, but he would advise getting your blood tested. A woman's brain reacts very quickly. As soon as Shane turned to go arrange further tests, the woman woke up and attacked her from behind. The girl screamed in fear. She assumed that she had become a vampire. She had been transformed. The head doctor of the hospital rushed to her aid, shocked by what was happening. The woman held Shane by the throat. She did not understand what was happening. The head physician of the hospital ordered the patient to calm down. She only growled in response. The girl tried to talk to her, but it was all in vain because it was no longer her. Then Shane finally realized that she had been reborn as a vampire. The woman grabbed the IV pole and threw it at the doctor. Thus, grabbing the girl tighter, the vampire jumped out of the window with her. The head doctor barely had time to grab Shane's hand. She was confused that it was Dean Lee. She thought that Jin Yun was saving her. He ordered to hold on tight so as not to fall. At this moment, Jin Yun stopped the vampire who was trying to escape. He neutralized her with one blow from his fist. He noticed something strange because she didn't smell like a vampire. He could not understand how then she remained unharmed when falling from the window. This was not clear to him. The head doctor was confused as to who this woman was. He had to go check on her after the fall. There was something alarming about her. Shane wanted to check it out too. But the doctor said that she was injured and should remain inside. Zung burst into the room. The doctor still insisted that she check her injury, and he would go and examine the patient. Zeng apologized to the doctor and asked him to let him see Shane. Zung asked to be let through to Shane. Thanking the doctor, he walked closer to her. He noticed that this guy was an ordinary person. But there is an unpleasant feeling, like a vampire. The guy asked what she was doing here like that, and ordered her to stay away from this doctor. She assured that he was normal, just new. And she was indignant at why she should stay away from the doctor. At first he didn't like Jiang Pan, now Dean Lee. Zhang noticed that Shane was injured. She said that she had just fallen out of the window and the doctor saved her. It seems her shoulder was dislocated. The guy grabbed the girl in his arms and carried her to the doctor. The nurses smiled after them. Shane was ashamed of being treated like a child. He was worried about the girl and kept asking Dr. Lee if she was okay. He assured that she had a slight sprain and that intense exercise would be contraindicated for her in the near future. Zung assured that a sprain is also an injury. The doctor thought that this would only give the girl a headache, and he reminded the young man that he needed special medicine. Rumors have already spread around the hospital that Shane has a boyfriend who carries her in his arms. Zung apologized. He didn't want rumors to spread about them. He apologized to the girl for not being there at that moment. She explained to him that this was her job. Dr. Lee went to the blood bank and selected a bag of blood that was already approaching its expiration date. The head doctor passed by and was carrying a vampire strapped to a gurney. He took some blood from her. Then he gave her a sedative and sent her to psychiatry. The doctor saw that she had good blood, but for a beautiful mutation she needed Shane's blood. It's cleaner. Before Zhang Pan leaves, you just need to wait. Dr. Lee, watching all this, thought why the head of the hospital needed this. It was very strange and incomprehensible. Dr. Lee walked into the room and handed the package to Zhang Yun, and he said that this should be enough for him to recover from his wounds. Yun thanked the doctor, and he was already leaving when he asked him if he had noticed anything unusual in this patient who had fallen out of the window. The guy thought to himself that indeed, if she fell from such a height, she would have serious injuries. But there is not a scratch on her, and she didn't behave like a vampire. Zung asked the doctor again. Maybe he noticed something strange. He waved his head saying no, apologized for the delay, and reminded him to take care of his wounds when he left the hospital. 
Although Dean Dye did not say anything, it can be concluded that the patient's temperament has changed due to medical stimulation. If there are drugs that can turn people into vampire-like monsters, then that is truly terrifying. Zung thought that this woman's appearance was really suspicious. This is very similar to the new type of vampire that has appeared recently. Shane invited the young man to go home together, since she had already finished her work, to which he replied that he wanted to go to headquarters. The girl was against it, because he couldn't do anything with such an injury. Having said that if he suddenly encountered a vampire, it would be too dangerous for other hunters to care about him. She asked what he wanted for dinner. Since the guy is injured, she will cook the food, thinking he thought that he could cook duck blood and beef tripe in a spicy soup or duck blood noodles. Approaching the house, Shane asked the guy if he was a vampire by chance, because he loves blood. Zen thought that she was thinking correctly. The girl clarified that it is very useful to eat foods high in iron after an injury. Approaching the front door of the apartment, the young man asked Shane if there was anyone else at home besides the children. She whispered that there was no one else here. Suddenly there was a loud bang and tinsel fell down. The lights turned on and congratulations were heard. On your return home, White Angel. Children Shane and Jiang Pan stood in front of them with firecrackers in their hands. He blocked the girl with himself. She objected why he didn't let her into the apartment. The nurse's son was not very happy with Zheng Yun's appearance. He screamed about what was the holiday. Jiang Pan replied that today is nurse's day, and he and the children decided to have a party. A surprise for his sister. Shane was filled with emotions of joy, since no one had done this for her before. She was incredibly happy about the surprise. The table was bursting with delicious treats. There were fruits, sweets, deli meats, and a big beautiful cake. Sung Pan whispered in Shane's ear that he baked this delicious cake for her, because she was his sister. The girl patted him on the head and was happy that she had such a younger brother. She thanked me from the bottom of her heart. He was very surprised, thinking that this was not the moment when a human girl should blush. Then her children ran up to their mother, shouting that they also helped make the cake. She was very proud of them. Zung Pan suggested that they finally cut the cake and start drinking tea. The children were in favor and ran to get the cutlery. The guys felt rivalry with each other, looked at each other with a cold, furious gaze that pierced them right through. Yun warned Pan not to pester Shen Xuan, to which he replied that it was the children themselves who came to him for help. Pan noted that as much as he dislikes people, she turned out to be very pleasant for him. Having said that it was not in vain that his father got involved with this modest woman Chen Qian Qian. Hearing this, Yun became furious and ordered him not to speak his mother's name. Shane worriedly asked if the guys were inadvertently quarreling again. It was clear they did not like each other. Pan was impressed by the fact that the girl worried about him most of all. He was flattered by this. Turning to Yun, she noticed that he was stained from the coffee that Pan had spilled on him. She ordered both of them not to fool around, because the wound could become infected and ordered me to take off my clothes to wash them. Sunshane approached Pan. He asks if he likes his mother. The guy answered positively. However, the baby saw everything himself. The young man asked the boy how confident he was that he could pursue his mother. He replied that knowing her, she is very slow. But he agreed to help with this only tomorrow. Pan was delighted, and glanced at Zheng Yun with a grin that he turned out to be stupid. Yun did not understand that before winning the favor of his mother, he must win the favor of her children. Pan thought to himself that Yun had always been a loser compared to him, and he would take everything from him including Shane Xuan Er. Yun watched as Shane persistently searched for something in the closet, and then she screamed that she had finally found the shirt. Handing it to him, she was embarrassed by the boy's steel abs, pumped up arms and broad shoulders. He didn't understand why she was giving him her clothes, but looking closer they turned out to be men's clothes. The guy was shocked how a lonely girl got men's clothes, and he demanded that everything be explained to him. She said that before moving here, she lived in an unsafe area and kept men's clothes at the entrance to scare away bad people. It was safer that way. She no longer needed it here, but the habit still remains. She thought to herself that she still needed things. What if someone male came to her home? Hyun calmed down, but at the same time he felt uncomfortable that he had behaved too aggressively. In the past, Fei Fei and the others, when they saw some men's things in the blonde's house, would also start gossiping like him. She told Yun that she was very sorry that she upset him. She never wanted to fall in love and bring men into the house. He hugged her from behind, asking why she thought so, because she was a wonderful and kind person, adding that no one wants love without a reason, but the two kids always wanted her to have someone who took care of her and them. So why shouldn't she fall in love? He began to reproach himself, saying stop talking like that, because she would get angry if he continued. Unable to restrain himself, the guy asked her if she was still waiting for the father of her children or maybe there is another reason. 
An inner voice screamed at him, Enough is enough, he needs to stop, that he is an idiot. She thought to herself that her children's identities might already have been revealed. The girl mentally told herself that she should not reveal herself because he was a vampire hunter. And she said out loud that this was her personal life, and he was not well-mannered if he asked such things. Having given him a slap in the face, she abruptly ran out of the room. She had never felt so angry before. Unwittingly witnessing what was happening, Pan mocked Zhang Yun, who chose the wrong way to woo a woman. The guy was upset that he had said too much, and in general everyone has their own personal, their own secret. Shane thought about it, and the thought came to her that it was true that when she chose clothes, she referred to the size of her ex's clothes. She noticed an interesting fact that they even smelled the same when children burst into the room scaring her. The children caught her inhaling the scent of his clothes, citing the fact that she was looking for any more stains. Noticing that mom had become very strange, they decided that tomorrow they would look for a young man for her.